This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this series of lessons, we're going to look at encrypting disk images and home folders to better protect our data. In this lesson, we're going to create an encrypted disk image by two different methods. To start off with, I'm going to use the disk utility located in Applications Utilities. We're going to create a disk image from a folder. So I'm going to go to the File menu, say New, Disk Image from Folder. I could have also used Shift-Command-N. I want to choose my Documents folder. There's not much information there, but for training purposes, this should suffice. Note that there's some clear text items in here. By default, the image format will be compressed, but no encryption. I'm going to change that to use 256-bit AES encryption. That's a very secure form. And I want to change the name a little bit. Call it Documents underscore GUI underscore encrypt. And I'm going to change the location to the desktop by typing Command D and click Save. Now it's going to challenge me for a password. I could use the password assistant to choose a good strong password. Just for this training lesson, I'm going to use the password of password. And I'm going to remember the password in my keychain. Depending upon the size of the data, it may take a little while to create that encrypted disk image. Now that we have the graphical user image created, we're going to close disk utility. Switch over to using terminal. In the terminal, we have many of the same features that we have in Disk Utility. In fact, we have probably many more. I'll let you read the man page for HDI Util to find them on your own. But I'm going to use HDI Util. I'm going to need to create and tell it what source folder to use. In this case, it's going to be my Documents folder again. And I need to give it the name that it is going to be using to create this image. I'm going to call it documents underscore CLI for command line interface and encrypt dot DMG. Now I have not turned on the encryption yet, so I'm going to put in the flag encryption and that should do it. Now I'm going to put in the same insecure password of password just for training purposes. I do need to type it twice. We should see some dots for a progress bar and then a prompt indicating that the disk image was created. Now it was created in my current folder, so I'm going to move the documents underscore command line encrypt dot disk image to my desktop. And there it is. Now I'm going to create one more disk image. And this one I am not going to encrypt. I'm just going to go ahead and create it with disk utility very quickly. And we're going to make this just a read-only image, not compressed, so that I can make a point about the encryption here later on. And we're just going to call this Documents and save it. All right, we now have three disk images. Let's take a look at how these behave differently. First of all, if I just double-click on the GUI created encrypted disk image, the one we used with Disk Utility, it just mounts automatically without asking me for a password. And that's because the password has already been stored in our keychain when we created it. If I double click on the Documents command line encrypted disk image, it does ask me for the password because that password has not yet been stored in our keychain. And of course, if I were to double click on the documents.disk image, it won't ask for a password at all because it's just a read only image. Okay, let me eject these two document disks. All right, now let's go back into the terminal briefly. And using the strings command, I'm going to show you the difference between an encrypted disk image and an unencrypted disk image. Strings is a command that goes out and looks for plain text type information in a file. So we're going to first look at just that unencrypted read-only disk image. 
And to make it easier to page through, I'm going to send this into the less command by pipelining it. And we can see the plain text from the files within that disk image. This happens to be Mark Twain, if anyone was interested. Now let's try the same strings command, but this time we'll choose one of the encrypted images. What we see here are the items that strings thinks are clear text words, but in actuality, no matter how far we go down, it's going to look just like random data, which is the whole point of encryption. You want to obscure the significant information and the sensitive information from prying eyes by obscuring it, making it just look like random data. Okay, so those are encrypted disk images, and they are very useful when you use them from one Mac user to the other. Say I needed to send somebody some secret information or sensitive information. I could use one of these disk images to do so. They are good for storing your own sensitive information on your mobile computers or desktop computers if you expect to keep that from prying eyes when those computers are not in your personal possession. Unfortunately, the disk images are a little bit limited in that if you take those disk images to someone using another operating system, they're going to have to make an extraordinary effort in order to open them up and see the contents and use them. So disk images are best between us Mac users.